Hello, welcome to another video. One of my subscribers actually asked how to do this to find the derivative of sine 4x from first principles. Initially, before I even attempted it, I thought it was going to be something very complicated. But when I sat down today to look at it, I noticed that it was something straightforward, just like how you find the derivative of any trig function from first principles. So I'm just going to do what I know how to do. Let's get into it. So the first thing we start with is the definition of any derivative from first principles and that's going to be f prime of x um, is simply going to be, in this case, um, we're going to just say it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of the sine of, instead of us having just 4x, it's going to be 4x plus h. Remember we always add, add um, h to x whenever we do this minus the sine of just 4x divided by h. So this is how you write it. You just add h to x at every point. I need you to recall the angle sum identity that is sine a plus b when you have two things you're adding together and you remember that so let's recall that sine a plus b is the same thing as sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. This is very important for the next line I'm about to write. So I'm going to expand this and say that f prime of x will be equal to, or I apply this to this, it's going to be equal to, oh, it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of sine 4x cosine 4h, okay, plus cosine 4x sine 4h. Okay, let's put this in parentheses each time. Okay, and then we go here, minus sine 4x. Okay, all divided by h. Nice. So, what, what the most important part is what kind of manipulation you do after now. So what I'm going to do now is look at what is common to any two terms. Um, what's common to this and this? Nothing. But I know sine 4x is also here. So I can factor out sine 4x from this and this. So maybe I should write it this way. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I factor out sine 4x, and this, so I bring this next to this and push this one over to that side. I'm going to have sine 4x. If I take it away from here, I'm going to have left cosine 4h. And what I have here will be minus 1. I'll leave it this way. And then I have plus cosine 4x sine 4h. Perfect. Or divided by h. Now this is where the manipulation begins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two um, rational expressions. So I'm going to say this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, I'm going to write sine 4x, okay, times cosine, let's write it this way, times, um, let's do this kind of parenthesis, cosine, or braces, 4h minus 1 over h, okay, plus, so I apply the limit law that um, you can have the sum of limits, okay, the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, as long as each limit exists, so what you have will be equal to um, the limit as h goes to 0 of just this one, cosine 4x, sine 4h, divided by h. Okay, so I've split the top into two separate limits. Now, what can I do? Now, I want you to recall again, if I can do the recall here. So this is the recall section. <laughs> recall also that the limit as h goes to 0, 
let's use theta, okay? Let's use theta. Of sine theta over theta is equal to 1. This is something you have to recall. You also need to know that the limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine theta minus 1 over theta is equal to 0. You have to recall these two. So at this point, I need to use these identities. I know there's something that, because h will go to 0, de definitely 4h will go to 0. As long as h goes to 0, any scalar multiple of it will go also go to 0. So I have something similar to this here that I can generate. So all I can do is multiply this by 4 so that this and this look alike. And then I can also multiply the top by 4 so I don't, I'm not creating anything special. So here I'm going to say the limit as h goes to 0 of, let me just put this aside, sine 4x multiplied by, now I'm going to write this as cosine 4h minus 1 over h. But I'm now, this is what we have on top here, okay? But now I'm going to multiply this by 4. But I'm going to cancel out this 4 by multiplying this by 4, okay? And I'm done. I haven't changed anything because this 4 cancels this 4, but I know now by this identity that this goes to 0, right? So let's go to the other line. This is going to eventually go to the limit of, it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 sine 4x four multiplied by 0. So everything here goes to 0. Let's go to the other side. We'll do a similar manipulation. This one has h. We can only do h with this one. This one we have to leave it alone. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of, let's leave cosine 4x alone. And on this side, I'm going to have the same similar manipulation. It's going to be sine 4h over h, but now I'm going to multiply by 4 and then multiply also by 4. Or I can put the 4 here on this side. Let's put the 4 here, if you can see it, okay? I can see it. <laughs> so now I know that this looks like this because theta goes to 0, theta goes to 0. 4h goes to 0, 4h goes to 0. So what I have here will be the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 cosine 4x multiplied by 1, because this goes to 1. Now let's see what we get. This is 0. 0 times this is 0, and the limit of 0 is 0 plus. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of just that. And remember, this is going to be just 4 cosine 4x, because there's no h in this expression, and this is 1. Wait, we're done. This is equal to f prime of x is equal to 4 cosine 4x. And this is what you get if you apply the chain rule to this. And we're done. So from first principles, you can also get this. I hope you learned something. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.